What makes our team special is that we have a certain ohana, and ohana means family in Hawaiian. And, and that feeling of ohana is, makes it different. It makes the game itself more than just the game. In the Hawaii football family, June Jones is more than just the coach. After a lifetime of lessons, he is the father of a football program and a teacher for life. I went to three colleges, five years, never played it down a football, 10 plays in five years, and I made it in the National Football League because I didn't quit. The National Football League was 20 years playing and coaching in my life. I loved every minute of it, but what I'm doing here, not just in football, but in the lives of my players as people, means more to me than anything that I probably would do in my lifetime. Sacrifice, love, that's what this game's all about. That's what it's all about. Tonight, let's play for each other. For each other. That's why we do this thing. Touchdowns will go away. Everything will disappear. But the faces in this room and the friendships you make will last forever. Uh, Alan Marlett that, that had a quote on a hero. And a hero is a person who, when he's tested, excels and in so doing inspires others. James Fenderson is just a true hero, and he was a hero to all. Scholarship to showing up unannounced. If you want it bad enough, good things do come. You really had to work hard for food. Sleeping in the car. You had every opportunity to quit. Everybody has to sacrifice something to go after a dream. Two years later, he's our MVP. He's not supposed to be where he's at. He's the person who nobody wants and goes out and gets it. Dream come true. It's an inspiring story. The most amazing stories ever. It makes you kind of teary eyed. I think it was Hollywood, not real during a long journey. After playing two seasons at Long Beach City Community College in California, James Fenderson was working for UPS. But in the summer of 1999, he returned to Hawaii, where he went to high school, with the intention of walking on to June Jones University of Hawaii football team. Ironically, on Fenderson's flight were several recruited players who were to meet two Hawaii coaches at the gate. June had just taken the job, and we had about maybe two, three weeks to recruit players. We were going to the airport, myself and Dennis McKnight, and we were picking up guys that we've never seen. This kid walks off with a cut-off black T-shirt, and I remember saying to myself, God, I wish I was here to pick up that kid. I mean, just big guns, ripped, shredded, you know, veins coming out of his neck. But, you know, I could tell he probably didn't have two nickels to rub together because his clothes were a little, a little worn. He had an old knapsack over his back. I get off the plane. My dad and my little brother meet me. We're at baggage claim. I see a little Hawaii van out there, and I'm like, they're coaches for Hawaii. Fenderson may have made a good first impression, but there was no scholarship for him. In fact, there wasn't even a place for him to live. He couldn't afford one. My parents didn't even know that I was staying in my dad's truck because I didn't know anybody at that time. I'm sitting in there just doing my homework, studying my plays, you know, drive to go get a little something to eat real quick come back and park on the side of, side of the road and wait for the next morning. The crazy thing about that is that I guess he was just real, a real humble and, and shy person because if anybody would have known he was staying in the car on his team, they would have they brought him in and let him, stay with us, no, let him stay with us. I didn't want to be a burden on nobody. I didn't want, you know what I'm saying, people to be worried about me. You know, I figured I was a man. I made a man decision to come out to Hawaii to try to try out for the team. I'm picking out all these loans, which I'm going to have to take care of. I might as well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, you know, on my own. If I need to go use the restroom, I go to McDonald's. As far as brushing my teeth, I could just go inside the locker room. After a while, I get to know some teammates, and they let me sleep on their couch in the dorm. But unfortunately, he couldn't eat with those teammates. He wasn't on scholarship, so he couldn't eat at training table. That kind of hurt. It was like, we're all a team, and we can't even eat together. Guys would, you know, bring extras. If they didn't finish their meal, they'd put it on a paper plate and, you know, bring it to James. He'd be sitting outside eating. But that got cut short because they were getting in trouble for it. I was hungry, but I was more hungry to be successful. Fenderson only was playing on special teams, but he became a standout. I was a special teams coordinator. Immediately, Fenderson became my number one athlete on every special teams. I made him captain of the special teams, and he played the game the way it should be played, with reckless abandon. You could tell he loved what he was doing. He became one of the great punt cover guys that, that I'd ever seen. I coached Elbert Shelley, been with Steve Taxer, and 
James Fenderson was in that level. So I remember even on the tape showing the play over and over, and I would make the guys look at the sideline, the guys jump up and explode when he made that tackle. Not the fact that James made that play, but the reaction that he was a hero to our guys because they all loved James and he, he was doing something that, that was important but didn't get any notoriety for doing it. He just worked his ass off every day and did everything to be the best he could be but wasn't getting a chance to play. You know, everybody's like, hey, this guy's the best running back we got, you know, and we'd all be talking, you know, whispering, you know, how come June doesn't play this guy? But in June's offense, you have to be proficient at the running back position at reading defenses, knowing who to pick up in blitzes in certain situations, and, and James struggled with that. He also struggled academically and financially. I'm sitting here taking out loans for 3500 a semester, and I don't know how I'm gonna pay this stuff back. To be eligible for his senior season, Fenderson needed to earn three A's during summer semester. He did just that. And after proving himself on the field and in the classroom, June Jones decided to reward him in a team meeting. He comes in, he's like, I got a special announcement. You know, James Fenderson has a scholarship. Everybody stands up and just starts screaming and pumping their fist in the air. You know, you thought we just won the, you know, the NCAA championship. Uh, you could tell Fendo was kind of shy about it, you know, kind of smiling. Everybody was hitting him. You know, patting him on the back, rubbing his head, you know, just so happy for him. There were tears in some people's eyes. It was one of those things where they knew, the team knew, that this guy has paid the price beyond anything that they could even comprehend. It just let me know that I belong. June, being the great guy he is, you know, most people, well, you know, we're not going to give a scholarship to a senior because better off giving a scholarship to a, you know, a freshman. And June said, you know, hey, Fendo deserves it. I'm going to give it to him. I'm like, OK, I, I worked hard for this. God has given me the talent to do this. And, you know, the best way I can, you know, show my appreciation is by what I do on the field. We had not heard about James. He was not on a prospect list. Nobody knew who James Fenderson was. When you watch the tape, it kind of spoke for itself. And Four games into his senior season, after two other running backs were injured, James Fenderson finally got his chance. Playing running back in just seven games, Fenderson led Hawaii in rushing and was named the team's most valuable player. Coach has been hollering from all his plays, and we watched this film, and we're just like, man, this guy's amazing. Like, where was he on the field before? Probably the best running back to ever play at Hawaii. This is probably where Fenderson's feel-good story should have ended. Yeah, still on his feet at midfield, still on his feet at the... But after the season ended, June Jones called an old friend named Randy Mueller, who was general manager of the New Orleans Saints. June said something to the effect, hey, we got a kid here. He said, you're going to think I'm crazy because he was third string until about a month ago. And I remember turning it over to our running back coach, Dave Adkins, in New Orleans at that time and let him look at it after I was done. And he came back like a kid in a candy store. It kind of hit me this year. You know, I'm actually out here. Well, I was really excited because if you didn't know any better, he was like a, a small Barry Sanders. James always believed in his heart he was a running back. And I'll never forget when it came time to sign as a free agent, Minnesota wanted him, almost guaranteed him a spot on the team because of his play on special teams. And James said, well, I get a chance to play running back. And they said, well, no, we want you to play teams. And he actually signed with the New Orleans Saints because they said, yeah, we'll give you a shot at running back. And I thought at the time, as well as other guys, that it was a mistake. At that time, they had Ricky Williams, they had just drafted Deuce, and they had Chad Morton here. I've never shied away from anything up to this far, so why not go out there and try out? James Fenderson, who has worn both number 27 and number 48, is now in his third season with the Saints as a backup running back and special teams player. In this day and age of computers and technical scouting systems, people aren't supposed to sift through the cracks anymore. Well, this guy did, and his whole life's kind of been like that. He'd probably be the first one to tell you he shouldn't be where he's at. Playing against the best players in the world. I'm just shocked and amazed. People still come up to me and like, can you believe you're in the NFL? He appreciates it more than most as well because of the route he's taken. He's telling me, he says, Coach, you know, it's amazing. I go in and 
you know, I need a T-shirt or something, you know, I get a brand new T-shirt to wear to the weight room or, you know, new socks if you want them every day. Still the same genuine Fendo that deserves all the good things that have happened to him. Everything James Fenderson's got in life, he's done himself. Everybody has to sacrifice something in order to be successful. I sacrifice being able to sleep in the bed and things like that in order to go after a dream. Life is gonna be a struggle. I can't see myself without struggling. You know, I'm still trying to keep my job here. It just goes to prove that you never know when your opportunity is gonna come. And it shows what hard work can do because nobody worked harder than James Fenderson. I'm just a person who knows what he wants and goes out and gets it. And sacrifice is all worth it.